Hey, hey, everybody. How's it going? Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the stream today. Today, we're doing a quick uh, live stream just to talk about some of my favorite stuff about Next.js. So if you haven't really used Next.js, this is a really fun one where we're, I'm going to touch on a few of my favorite features and how we can kind of speed up our workflow with Next. Um, I definitely, for myself, would use Next.js over plain React for production level applications. And there's a few reasons why. Um, so yeah, intro. My name is Chris Sev. I'm a senior developer advocate at DigitalOcean. And um, I lean more to the front end side of things. I'm traditionally uh, a Laravel, PHP, full stack kind of uh, dev, but a lot of JavaScript lately. And Next.js is one big reason why. So um, hello, everybody. Yes, Next is exciting. Hey, Nick, thanks for joining us. Um, Next is exciting for what it does. The amount of things that it brings out of the box that you don't have to configure. Uh, like, let's talk about the things that in React you have to configure yourself. You have um, routing, which let's go look at that real quick. I have a brand new Next application. Um, Index.js is going to be your homepage here. Hey, Micah, welcome to the stream. So here, index.js, this is the default that you get out of Next.js. And you have a home component here. I'm going to open up my terminal, and we're going to do npm run dev. And Next.js lets us run this out of the box, gives us localhost 3000. And I don't know why you opened in Safari. Let's go here, localhost 3000. And here is our Next.js app. Now, the cool thing about this is we have... Uh, file system routing out of the box, thanks to Next.js. I can go here, about.js, check this out, uh, export default function, uh, about, no props there, return div about page. Cool. So let me zoom in. So now, just by creating a file, we don't have to use the React router or anything. We just go over here and say forward slash about. And we have an about page. So question in the chat, why uh, I'm using Nuxt, why should I change over to Next? Really, it depends on your preference. Like if you like the React ecosystem, come over to Next. If you like the Vue ecosystem, stay over on Nuxt. So really, um, React versus Vue preferences. So that's um, page level routing. I want to talk about my next favorite one. I have uh, a website called scotch.io. And there's about 2,000 pages on that site. And when we're deploying it, there's two different ways to deploy a Next application. This is why I really love Next, is you can deploy it, one, as a static HTML site. Or if you have a giant site, um, you can deploy it as a dynamic site. And every time a dynamic page is loaded, it will statically render it. Or sorry, it will render it and then save it as a static file for the next uh, access, which is dynamic and static all at the same time. Amazing feature. And the way you do that is, um, we'll touch on it here, but the next Tech Talk that I have going in next week is where we're going to spend uh, 45 to an hour long of talking about how to dynamically, statically, incrementally generate uh, Next.js sites. So, um, there's a link in the chat if you want to register for that tech talk where we're pretty much going to build a blog on stream. Um, but here, if I did export function, get static props, the way that this works is you can say console log, I'm on the um, server. So this is, kind of runs in node. And then over here, console.log, I'm on the client. So if I go back to my uh, Chrome right here, and I refresh this page. It's like proxy did not return an object. Oh, that's probably true. So let's go down here. Let's return an object and inside of this props and no properties on that props object. So let's double check this. Let's go here, refresh, and let's go look at our console. I'm on the client. So this console log ran on the client. And then let's go into our terminal here. And we have I'm on the server and I'm on the client. So when you're generating HTML, sorry, when you're generating Next.js pages, you're going to see the log on the server and then also on the client.
but on the client side, you only see what's in your component. So get static props is how Next is going to say, let me go get data before actually spitting out an HTML file and a full page. Really, really cool feature. Um, definitely check out next week's Tech Talk if you're interested in that. And we're going to build out a blog uh, set up there. But the next thing I want to talk about, the last tip that I want to talk about is kind of um, a recent one that came out with Next.js 10, which came out in, I believe, October. But over here, let's uh, delete everything inside of this outward right here. And I'm going to add an image source is equal to, and I have one here. I have one prepped for this. I have space.jpg. So I'm going to say space.jpg. And we have an image there. So Next.js comes with image optimization out of the box, and it's fantastic because it's really, really easy to implement. So if I go to our browser here, I'm going to go to the homepage. And in the network tab, under images, we have a 947 kilobyte gigantic image. That's almost a megabyte of image. Really, really slow if you're on um, 3G or your mobile devices. So Next.js says, OK, well, we can do better here. Let's do import an image component. So they just added in this image component from Next.js. I'm going to change this to an image right here. And the next thing, only thing you have to do is width is uh, 1920 and height is 1080. So just by doing that, just by adding this image component, uh, what's going to happen here is that Next.js is going to say, well, that image is giant. Let me see if I can optimize it for us. So if we go here, image 591. So sorry, let me get that out of your way. Um, network tab. So we're at 591 instead of that 947. So very good drop. Uh, that's about 30%, right? So let's take a step further and let's go here. Um, I want to make sure that this is responsive. So what this did was compress the file, made sure it was uh, as performant as possible. And what it'll also do is lazy load an image for us. So uh, it will only load the image if it's within the viewport. But the next thing we can do is say layout is responsive. And now Next.js will actually deliver a smaller file size based on the browser size. So here we go. We refresh, um, which it already did for us. We're at 591 kilobytes, same as before, right? But if I go and go to a mobile right here, so let's go mobile. We went down to 320. It loaded automatically a different file size, 50.6 kilobytes. So that's amazing right there um, compared to the 591. And what's cool here is if I change this out to responsive and we grow, it'll load the correct file size based on the browser size. So if I went really small, it already had that version, 50.6 kilobytes, so it'll use that. But you can see how it's loading different file sizes based on our browser. So one of my favorite features of Next.js, look at that cool image. All right, so what is the best practice for width and height of an image? Just type in the actual size of the image. Yes, you can definitely type in the width and height of the actual image, or you can set it to um, an actual height. Like this image is way bigger than 1920, 1080, but I just said 1920, 1080, and it automatically started there. And then it gave us all of the different sizes. So um, it does that for us. And also, very good eye, Matthew Woods. It did change it from a JPEG to a, to a WebP image file. So a little bit more performant. Let's see, do a video about Laravel 8. I will happily do that. We can make that one of the next Tech Talks after this upcoming one about Next. Um, and I really want to build out full stack apps. So what we've been doing is we did a lot of Laravel content. We're doing Next.js content. And now we're going to bridge them together. We're going to do a Laravel API plus a Next.js front end um, and build that out. So look out for that. Uh, next question from Nick. Does Next.js support TypeScript out of the box? Yes, it does. If you go to nextjs.org, the homepage, scroll down, there is TypeScript support out of the box. So all you do here is you create your tsconfig.json, and um, 
any, sorry. And then you install your uh, types and change out your file to .tsx and you're good to go. So all of that is fantastic. But tip number two is the one I want to go back to. The one that we kind of touched on today in the about.js, get static props um, and the routing. The ways that we can generate a Next.js site is what I'm really excited about. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next Tech Talk next week. So please, if you are interested, RSVP there. Keep an eye out because there will be more Laravel content coming. And yeah, thanks for joining us for this quick live stream. I appreciate you being here. And uh, thanks for joining us in the chat and hanging out. I hope you like Next.js. And I hope that uh, with this next Tech Talk, we can show you more reasons why Next.js. Uh, I don't even work for Next.js, but I absolutely love it. So uh, we're going to do a lot more of that content plus Laravel content in the future. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you next week in that Tech Talk.